Welcome to another beautiful episode of Memoir of a Ninja Girl. My name is Helen. On today's episode, we will be talking about sisterhood. And uh, of course, it has to feature the first daughters. Um, I feel like many, many people think that um, being the first daughter is actually a chore. So today, I decided to bring two first daughters here on my show. And I have Smart. She's an entrepreneur and I also have Glory, she's an entrepreneur. So Smart is the first daughter and Glory is the first daughter and the only daughter. How cool is that? So I'm, I think I'm also a first daughter now, like I'm a first daughter. Welcome on the show guys. Thank you. Thank you. So what is it like to be a first daughter? Okay, for me basically I grew up with three brothers so um, being the First daughter and um, like the last girl yeah. and the only girl in the family is it has its own challenging because every work left by those boys comes down to me. Ooh. So I have to basically do every like I'm the mother of the house on my mother's behalf. You understand? Mm. And you? Uh, being the first daughter for me is not quite challenging. Growing up um, around guys. I have five brothers and the only daughter, you know, I, I was quite sport, maybe by my mom and a little for my dad as, as well. I don't do all the house shows, like she said, I don't do that. But growing up, now I think I know the challenges, like I have to look after my younger ones, not like look after them, taking them out, but you know, financially, yes, emotionally, sometimes you have to be there for them. So that yeah. is the only challenges for me, but the house shows as a daughter, you have to do this. I didn't do that so. so do you think it is a privilege to be a first daughter for me i feel it's a blessing why right? because you know this last born thing if you touch me the way i will shout mm -hmm. but when it comes to those chores um, yeah, you know, wow. by the time they pile up everything when you have brothers that have friends that have cousins that have friends they all come they eat you have to serve them you have to cook you have to clean i'm lazy typical lazy nigerian girl but when it comes to dealing with my brothers, um, even if you're sick, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear that because they'll feel like you're pretending you don't want to work. You understand? So, but it's, it's also good. It's a good deal for me. I learned a lot and I've learned a lot and I'm still learning from them. Do you think you being sport is a re as a result of you being the only daughter? In a way, yes. And then the last one thing, you know, your parents will always have to support you whatever you do and right. then they the older ones are supposed to be like an example people you look out to i look out to learn stuff from right but when everything you do it's okay by your parents and then those ones they are the ones being blamed for your actions actions yeah so it's a way of getting sports yeah do you feel privileged yeah i do i feel privileged being the first daughter but in my case i'm the only daughter but i have half sisters Mm. The reason I think, um, I, why I feel blessed is because I think it gives me this, um, not just the seniority, but I feel <laughs> I have, not just the seniority chance, but I feel like I have a more, more understanding to take care of my family, like, yeah. in, in terms of family, like, nothing is going to happen to my mom, uh -huh. you understand, but if anything in the house, I can be, I can stand Your for my family, yeah. I can stand for my brothers, and at the same time, I think, being the first that I have more, not like knowledge, because I can, you can be older than, I can be older than you, how do I put it? You can, can be, be older, older than, than me, me but I, can I have, have more knowledge. Than you experience. Have, yeah. experience. No, experience, I can't have more experience, I can have knowledge, because I, I think experience... Uh, well, I don't think experience has to do with seniority, though. Yes, it no. does. Okay, so why is the adage of you can, you can, um... You can know a lot like an adult, but you cannot have a rag. <laughs> that has to do with experience. I feel like it, that has to do with people's um, personal journey. At for it's age. age. Age, age doesn't really tell experience. I don't think it doesn't. so. It doesn't. Okay, but because you might be sixty and you've not experienced what, what a fifteen-year-old year old or a thirty-year-old has been through. It's yeah. just life journey differs for different people. Oh. So, <laughs> I, I think I was speaking to someone and he said that he doesn't think there is any sort of expectations from first daughters. Expectations are, it, it shouldn't be forced on them. Yeah, but first daughters have this thing already. Like, you are the first in the family. Mm. 
and then you understand the family running. You are not the first in the family. You I'm are just the, the first, first daughter. Exactly. Do you yes. understand? Because I ha I have I have siblings. I have a elder I have an elder brother. And I feel like it's more like you are their mom. You have to look out for them. You have to make sure that they listen to you. I think that's the part I like being the first daughter. Just the fact that I can look out for my siblings. Like mm -hmm. I get to tell them like I'm your, like I'm your mother. They seem like one day my brother we were chatting. Then he said something to me. Said I see you as our mother. Mm. I love it. Like after then, that's I, the experience. Really thinking about, I like it because it's the experience that comes in now. Because okay. you're not just a child born in the house. For no. someone to look up to you on something, they see you as a representative of, of the family. Of the family. Yeah. Of a mother figure. It might not necessarily be your child. But it's common, like people, I, I, will I say human nature blesses women with that. If you are not left home early to hustle on your own, mm -hmm. on the beat of hustling, you must have, you might have seen things that will change your initiative, that will change the way you think. And that is where the experience comes in. You get what I'm saying? And that's why they can always come up to you and to look ask up to questions. You. Because I like the fact that I'm the first daughter because of the responsibility alone. I think that, and that is because I just want to feel like a mother, that's mother figure. Uh -huh. That's just it. I just like that. So always like, okay, I have kids at home, even though they are not my kids. And it makes you more responsible. It, yes, because you yes. look up to me. That's just this. Like to call the love story, I let people look up to me. I know I have younger ones that are looking up to me, even if not my younger ones. Like my uh, our firstborn is, is a boy. Mm -hmm. He looks up to me. I know that. That's, but I'm a girl, you understand? That not looking up to me like in. any other thing. But that the fact that he knows in. even if our mom is not there for us, you are there. This girl are can there. be there. She can represent our mom. But the fact that you are that person that everybody look up to, who do you look up to? Because sometimes I feel like everybody has certain stages. You start to feel like, oh, um, I'm in a space where I need someone to speak to. We get to that. You know, yeah. you know. I think we always get to that stage, but. You don't want to put your problems on your younger ones because they also have a few things to to to, to to talk about themselves. You don't want to be like a burden. So now you are in a in a space where you can, certain things you can't tell your parents. I, I feel that way. As much as you love them, certain things you can't tell them. Of course. But your younger ones would trust you enough to say, to "Oh, Auntie, I have this problem." Blah 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 blah. But you, blah, don't, blah. Have you, but you don't have to. So how how can you get it together? For me personally, I sometimes feel like I have a lot I'm carrying. Right. And then you don't have that one person to talk to. Mm -hmm. But everybody brings theirs to on your head. And you. So personally, because I am very nonchalant about a lot of things, I feel like if I'm able to solve your problem, I have solved half of my problem. Problem, right. So I see anyone who is talking to me, talking, I talking to that person. For you to be able to come up to me to say, oh, auntie, I have this, I see me in you talking to me. And at the same time, the way I'm sharing, giving you an advice, I'm advising myself. myself. Yeah, what if your story is different? For stories being different, I, like, I don't really take things deep. I'm just... But I think Personally. for that, as if you want to talk to somebody, because um, even your younger ones, you can't feel free around them. There mm. are some things you want to share with people, but because you know this person, I am older than you. I don't know, but I have it personally. Like, I want to open up to you, but because you're my younger brother, younger. like, I feel like, let me just say it to my friends. Mm. If I have a friend I trust, I feel this person is going to understand me better than you. One, I feel like you're my younger brother, you're not going to understand me better. Mm -hmm. If my, maybe my OM, older brother, but we don't have that connection, like I like do with my, my dear yes, younger brother. brother. Yeah. You understand? I would have loved to tell him those things, you understand? But some of the time, who do I talk to? I call Ellen. I call my other friend, you understand? But I have siblings, I have mother, I have father, but I can't say these things to them. Not because yeah. they are bad things, but sometimes you, don't, you just feel like, you don't I don't know, you don't want that weakness, that, that's part mm -hmm. of you, like you don't know how to, that's your weak part. You don't, you, don't, you don't want them to see that you're yes, weak, that the, can't such a problem. But the perfection eh, that, that people assume that, that is bestowed on mm -hmm. first daughters, don't you think some, sometimes it's quite unnecessary? Nobody. Because for example, if your younger one 
makes a mistake and maybe it's something you've done before and your parents will tell you oh you are the one who, who made your sister do that because that was your mistake but now they are putting somebody else's mistake on you because you are an example you are meant to be an example for them and um, the the setting here is everyone expects you like i said you let me mental. let me assume i'm the first daughter in the family everyone is um, I, um expects you to be an example yeah to the younger ones now for instance if i was born first and the only girl i am responsible for my younger brother mm. how the way i act what i learn I would definitely impact it on every other child. Mm -hmm. So where and because my parents know that it is me and my younger brother, there is no other person coming in. Every blame comes to me. Mm. You get. Mm. So that is why you, as the older one, you should make you make sure you have conscious effort not to be that person mm. that they will blame on everything. Now my younger brother might decide to learn whatever he wants to learn outside. But it's blame, she comes back On to you. Yeah. And then the, why the parent blames us, they feel like you are older. You probably must have seen those things. You probably should have corrected your siblings from doing stuff like that. So that's why I would say 70% of the blame comes to us because parents feel we are always together. It's your brother. You should be able to open up. You should be able to see where he's defaulting. And then you will correct him. Don't you think these blames, these expectations, can be as exhausting it's too much of course it's, can it's too be. much it's too much of course what would you what would you advise parents to do <laughs> every child has their own strength and weakness and then this blame thing and comparison is not always good right on kids mm -hmm. every if you have a child you should know what your child can do and would do and when a child comes up with some attitude that you you know is not from your house and then you're blaming your other child for his attitude I think you have failed as a parent as a parent mm. so because these two children are yours it is your responsibility to train them if you imbibe a lot on the first and then the second is going off track mm -hmm. don't blame the first always don't blame the girl child always ask yourself where you are defaulting and fix it and fix it don't so, blame your, child, your children on it. how do you manage to keep it together knowing your siblings and your parents look up to you, especially when they are older? For me, do you want to talk? No, you talk. It's like she's... Parents looking up to me is, is, is a norm. Mm. And I'm left to just a parent. So, I... They always say I have an old woman's head. Like, I don't even act like a last born. born. I just feel like I'm alone, you get. So, if my older ones are not there, won't I do it? So it's, I feel like if I'm doing stuff for my parents, I still assume that those ones are not there. Mm. So it is my own role I'm playing as a child, not as a position of first, second or third or last child. Okay. So what do you say? The question again. How do you manage to keep it together, knowing your siblings and your parents look up to you? I don't think I keep it together. Like I said, I don't know everybody that everybody's life is different. Yeah. My life, I think that is what keeps me together. Mm. The fact that I know people are looking up to me. The fact that I realize every time I can sit and think if I want to make this mistake, before I take this step, I have my younger ones there. Do I want them to do something like this? How am I going to feel if what I am doing now happens to my younger brother or yeah. I get a call today like, you are okay, you are, if, so before, I have a baby now. Mm. When I was much younger, before I go to a place, I don't think at the middle of the night I can walk from here to odd by bus stop mm -hmm. without any fear. Yeah. <laughs> but I realize these days, little thing, mm -hmm. I have to think twice. You understand? Because not only because of my daughter, I know if I fail myself thinking this girl is small, how do I know my actions today? Well, no, affect affect her. Fine, you are family. But there are some things you do, your family, they can't forgive you. Right. You understand that. So sometimes when I want to do something, I, I don't keep it together. They keep me together. Like whenever I remember, the yes, thought. I have people looking up to me. I have my mom, them. I have my younger ones. I keep myself together. Wow. So I know in the early years, I don't want to put a stamp to it. I know that females are not really regarded in the family structure. Do you think that the, mod uh, the modernization of things have really changed it in a way that every family now see that it is so important to have a female child just the same way it is important to have a male child? 
I was talking to a lady, one of my aunties, and she was just like, ah, it is important to have a female child. Mm -hmm. It is important to have a female child. Yes. So I kept wondering, auntie, why are you ringing it like this? <laughs> you get? Yeah. In, back in the days, it's just when you have a female child, you've wasted childbirth. Yes. You shouldn't have. But the old scenario has changed now because women are doing much women are winning Caring as well. they are taking charge of the family responsibilities and i think that scenario that scenario should be wiped off if you think a girl child is a waste of time then you have failed i'm, I'm sorry for your future no you don't even have to be sorry i'm, I'm sorry I don't for think you this day. <laughs> People give faith to give birth to girl child. I'm sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I'm not trying to be tribalistic or anything. Like, I think the eastern parts of Nigeria before, they used to feel like when you give birth to a female child, it's a waste. Mm -hmm. They want a, a male yeah, child. child. They, they want a male child. name and all that. But these days, a lot of Igbo men, they want their wife to have maybe three female child and one male child because the lady, to the female child is going to take care of them, um, bride, fries and all that. I it think so. everywhere, funny enough. But you know, you know, like most of these people from the other side, they are more vulgar. Right. And then most of those, the people you mentioned, they have businesses, they are businessmen, they are not corporate as other, or these ones are business name. So they like, and when they are putting the business name, so, so, so name and sons, they don't put right. daughters. daughters. So that is why they are always after you having a son to take after the name. Now, let me take you back to growing up. I used to have, we used to have this family friend that whenever the wife gives birth to a female, a girl child, mm -hmm. he dumps her in the hospital, he doesn't go and pick her up. Oh, wow. Does not pay the hospital bills, does not take care of her. And then when she comes back home with that child, he beats her and throws her out of the house. So it's like my mom and every other person will go and be begging him and take her in and all that. So he did that with the first child, the second child, the third child, the fourth child, and the fifth. So God kept giving him girl children, like he has five girls now. But guess what? He's now old and he's left alone in the, vi yeah. in the village because the girls will not accept him the and, way he did not accept them. And the funny them. thing is, the male, the father, they have the determinant of the sex, of their children. Is it always that way? Yes. Now or over now, It's always yeah. like that. So they say if your wife is having a female child, then it is on you. It's, it's it your is what you put in that, in she, that, 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 she, that she gives birth but to. But no, that's like giving you bus bus, straight back. It's scientifically, it doesn't yeah. work that way. Yeah, it does. So now, let me go to religion. Mm. Is it when they say, I pray to God for a particular sex, is it that God doesn't even answer prayers to that? Well, I, for me, I think a child is a child. You are a male, you are a female, whatever it is, a child is a child and that's... That, that doesn't. That thing should be. That doesn't take that, away the. That thing should be sent. That thing should be erased. Every child that comes out from a womb, it is what you have put there, and that is yours. It shouldn't be. I expected you. I, anyone that will come up with that, I expected it to be a boy for a first child. It's just sick. Mm. That person does not have a proper growth. So today we have first daughters. We have first daughter. In fact, we have only daughters. <laughs> only daughters. <laughs> so so boy. it is. So, so insightful to have you guys here. Thank you very much, Glory and Smart, for coming. And my name is Helen. That is it on today's episode of Memoir of a Ninja Girl. Stay tuned, subscribe, like, comment, and don't forget to share. Uh, my Instagram handle. I don't want to forget that. Helen.love.23. God bless you. Bye.